Shalom, shalom, saints. Bless you all. Glory to the King. Welcome to night two of our preparation series when it comes to deliverance. It's good to see uh, all of you. Some of you that have been around for a while kind of know how the crowd can uh, get pretty scarce when we start talking about deliverance. But it's encouraging to look out and see that we got <coughs> excuse me, a more serious-minded saint, or saints, I should say, in the house today. All right, which one of you righteous brothers want to lead us off in prayer? Obviously. Brother Scott. Father, y'all, Father, we do thank you. Thank you for another day. We thank you for another time to be able to come before you, Father, and hear your word, hear your message, Father, you have for us on your, on your feast, Father. We do thank you. Thank you for inviting us to your feast, Father. You're welcome here. We ask, Father, that your spirit move on the minds of all saints here. Open up their understanding of all the words your elders, your pastors have for us, Father, that you put in them, Father. We give you thanks and all glory. In my name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Bro Scott. All right. All right. We we come together several times a year and we celebrate the feast of the Most High Yah. I had a few saints ask me you know, in their excitement. Elder, what's the, what's the most important thing? You know, hey, why are you excited about going to the feast? And I know for a lot of you, because you don't get a chance to get the straight way, and some of you aren't in a, like an assembly that you go to weekly, your most excited thing for you is coming and being around all your brothers, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. But my response was, I can't wait to go up there and get some deliverance. Hallelujah. Yeah, I could not wait to come up and get some deliverance. And for those of you that were here on Shabbat and you stuck around, y'all probably saw your elder. As soon as the service was over, I was over here in the corner getting delivered. See, de deliverance, it's, it's literally your lifeline. You know, Pastor Dow told me a long, long time ago, he said, brother, because I wasn't an elder then, he said, brother, you're going to see in this walk that the people you have the most issues with are the ones that avoid and do not do deliverance. I'm sure many of you, he has told you the same thing. And for the most part, you can tell those that are very, very serious about deliverance. And you can tell those that are not serious about deliverance. We have all kinds of excuses. We make up all kinds of things in our minds to not go after the spirits that are dictating and dominating and controlling us. But when you think about what was said to us, starting off in the feast, Most High showed up, correct? He spoke to us, did he not? Interpretation, tongues. And he talked about how a lot of us showed up here at this feast with dirty hands, all right, unclean hands. And I didn't get the whole thing. I got that portion from somebody else. But the part I did hear was how he spoke about how we don't have a love for our brethren. It's very, very easy to hide in a big old crowd like this and, and present yourself as you're something holy. Present yourself that you are striving to literally be set apart. 
all right? Real easy to hide. Now, another thing Pastor Dow said to me after we got that, he was like, well, you know we're not really speaking to the communities. And, of course, for any of you that live on the community, you know that iron sharpening that iron. You are forced <laughs> to love your brother. All right? So we got a lot of people, a lot of saints here that have come from great distances. But what's your motivation for being here? What is your true, deep motivation for being here? See, once we deal with ourselves, then we're at a point. Well, let's just go like what the book says. You got this big old plank in your eye, right? But you're looking at the moat that's in your brother's eye. And the book instructs you, deal with that plank. All right? Because it's you, it's massive. Now, once you deal with that plank and you remove that, now you can see clearly. And when you see that little moat that's in your brother or your sister's eye, you will have compassion on them. Why? You've just been through it. So now we're back to what Yah spoke to us, that we're showing up at the feast with unclean hands and we don't have a love for our brother so what we're going to do tonight and we, we've been mandated it can't be no longer than an hour <laughs> all right so y'all don't have to worry about elder or any of us else getting up here being long-winded but the challenge for you and what we're going what we're looking to do is to get you to get back to the basics, the simplicity of the gospel. You know how easily that is forgotten, correct? Yes, sir. Let's just get back to the simplicity of the gospel. We can look at how these things start off in us, within. Is the Holy Spirit within you? Yes, well, we have to start showing that. Because what a lot of us are showing because we have unclean hands, because we don't love our brethren, is that we have either quenched the Holy Spirit that, that was in us. We do know. David has taught us you can lose the Holy Spirit, right? Or we never had it. You never had it. And all this, everything about this operates on love. Hallelujah. It all operates on love. So the goal and the challenge for you is to get your minds totally focused on what it's going to take for you to get set free. Deal with these planks that's in you, all right? So that when you do look out and you see the little moat that's in your brother's eyes, you will deal with them correctly with compassion and with love and with long suffering things that they need, especially if they strive. Elder, you can come on up, you want. Yeah, sit there. You want to come up? Oh, all right, you can go. You ain't bother me. Mm -hmm. So, this is what we're trying to help you get across with. Now, Teacher Shane did a great job last night. How many of y'all made it here last night for Teacher Shane? <laughs> Teacher Shane did an incredible job. I talk a lot in Georgia. I talk a lot, period about how powerful words are. Words formed everything. But we so loosely use words because we're not sober in mind. You, you getting that? So what, we're, what the goal is, okay? You're here at the feast. Love on your brother. Please do. Celebrate. Do it all. But in the back of your mind, you've got to have that desire in you to get free so that you can go and help your brother. In deliverance, a lot, if people have been around me, you will literally hear me yelling and screaming at brother while they're doing deliverance. Love your brother. Love your brother. Deliverance is a labor of love. All right? And we're going to probably 
learn a little more about that later in the week. But today, we're going to get to the basics, okay? We're going to get back to the basics and learn and understand what one of the major strongholds is that stops us from doing what the Most High say we struggle in, which is loving our brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to get started here. Praise you. Bless you, Pastor Cole. Teacher Shane, you, you set up ready to go back there, my brother? We're good to go. Genesis 4. We're going to go back to the beginning. We're going to go back to the basics. You see how Teacher Shane took you back to the basics and showed you yesterday how you were in darkness, right? You were in darkness. Now you're in light. But so many of us desire the darkness. We want to dwell in the darkness. You're not Yah. <laughs> You're not Yah. You don't understand the darkness. He brought light to you for a reason. And you have a, 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 a charge and a command to be a light to this world. Is that correct? Yes, but if you don't understand the basics, which is loving your brother, you're not going to be no light for nobody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read, teacher. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from Yah. And she again bare his brother, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of okay. the ground. Okay. What was Cain? Tiller of the ground. And what was Abel? Keeper of sheep. Important. Hey, this part here, okay? Listen up. This part here. I don't have much. Of, look, look. I'm going to show you. I do this sometimes. Look. Elder Roof is old school. I don't have no displays for y'all. I got a piece of paper, all right? Y'all see what I got? That's it. That's it, all right? Simplicity of the gospel. We can sit up here and inundate you with 50 scriptures. You ain't going to remember one of them. But if you make up in your mind that, hey, this is something I need to focus on, and I'm going to meditate on this, and I'm going to seek the face of Yah, he will reveal to you what's needed in that for you. And I'm going to help you out a little bit more. I got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scriptures. That's it. And I'm going to read. Peter Shane or myself are going to read. You need to focus on four of them. This Genesis scripture is one. So we're going to take our time on this one, okay? This may eat up half of my time. But we're going to take our time because we want to break it down. Why? Didn't I say we're going back to the basics? If we don't understand the basics and how it operates, you can't keep advancing, y'all. You know, this world has programmed us to rush, 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 and skip steps. B is still after A in the American, alpha, in the English alphabet. C still comes after B. All right? We take our time. We process it. We get understanding. And all thy getting, get an understanding. You get that understanding, you can walk in this power. All right? I think it's a shame. We're looking around here now. We got at least 250, 300 people in here. But if mass deliverance broke out, it'd be the same 50 people helping all of us. The same 40, 50 fold. I think it's a shame I had to come all the way up here to straightway just to get deliverance. Y you understand what I'm saying? We got to grow in this power. We got to grow in this love. It is a labor of love. So, what was Cain? Killer of the ground. What was Abel? Keeper of the sheep. Remember their title. And I'm saying that to you because a lot of you get caught up in titles. This man can do this, and this, or this brother can do this, and this sister can do this, and, and you go back and forth in your mind, and you put merit, and you put stock, and you raise the level of, well, if he can do this, he's more important. Oh, well, she can do this, so she's more important. Last I checked in a body, there are many members in a body. I'm not going to tell you your pinky finger is more important than your kneecap. 
Because the day you need your kneecap, you ain't thinking about your pinky finger. I don't care if that pinky finger is working every single day for you, but the day you need that kneecap, and I'm using kneecaps for you sisters out there. All y'all that's been in the kitchen running out, hell to pray for my knee. No, sit down. <laughs> you don't need prayer for your knee. Now, of course, the elders still pray for them, but the problem is, is we got a faithful 30, 40 sisters that's doing all the cooking and all the preparing. And they got to have jacked up knees and elbows, I mean, and ankles, while everybody else just, what pastor say, just sit out and spread it out. Pay attention to the titles. Read, teacher. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. Okay. And Abel did what? Brought the first ah. Of the first you didn't hear that about Cain, did you? All this, everything, it still boils down to an offering. What are you sacrificing for Yah? How many of you came here with an offering? Don't raise your hands. Please don't raise your hands. I'm just, I'm just listening to them. <laughs> How many of you came here with an offering? Think about it. Think about your offering, all right? If you came with one, knowing that the command tells you not to show up at the feast without an offering. Everybody know that? Yes. If you don't, you do now. You should never show up to a feast without an offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you came with an offering? And if you did come with an offering, was it from the first of your increase. Did you get that increase and say, this belongs to Yah, I'm taking this to Pastor Dow? Or did you get your offering in, do what you felt like you needed to do and you were obligated to do, and then say, oh, I have this left and I can give this to Pastor Dow? Go ahead and read, teacher. And Yahweh had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Do you want respect for your offering? Let your offering be of the first fruit of what you bring in. Now, all of us that are in communities, <laughs> we give it all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you that are not, you need to be taken from the firstlings of your offering. And we're going to read a little bit further, and it's going to explain to you why you need to do this. And it's going to be building, all right, y'all? We're building. We ain't forgot. We're we talking about deliverance. We're talking about deliverance, but we're building. Make sure your offering is adequate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Teacher Shane. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Man, I don't know how many times in the ministry. I got Pastor Corey up here. Got Elder Mitchell. I see Elder Austin. Good to see you, my brother. <laughs> Glad y'all finally made it. <laughs> the devil be fighting. Uh, the deacons are here. I don't know how many times we have used that same language with you saints when something goes down you don't do something right if you just do right won't you be accepted and you have the same response that Cain had instead of getting humble and saying man he loves me I just need to do better I'm wrong you get offended you get offended let's see what happens when we get offended now this is the basics right Everybody in here should already know this story. But the Bible talks about all the time taking you back. Back, remember, remember, remember. We forget so easily. Don't forget we're talking about deliverance, y'all. We're still talking about deliverance. Read, teacher. And if thou doest not well, 
sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And Yah said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. What happened? When you gave a bad offer, an unacceptable offer, and you didn't receive the correction, what was the judgment? You speak it out. What happened? There it is. You're under a curse. So some of you want to know why some, not, not all, some of you have these questions to yourself. Why do I struggle when it comes to the spiritual things of Yah? We got a lot of folk that can deal with stuff naturally. We got, I can line a hundred brothers up and I, all of them are great workers. But if you give them two spiritual things to judge, they couldn't give you an answer. Not from the perspective of Yah, not from the law. I'm talking about brothers in here, okay? And why is that? Why do we struggle spiritually to deal with things? It's because we cursed, all right? And we curse because the offering that has been set forth is not acceptable. It doesn't matter if it's a financial offering. It doesn't matter if it's coming from your flock. It doesn't matter if it's your time. It doesn't matter if it's just other labor. What matters is how you give it and what spirit you give it in. That's what matters. Now, back, back to deliverance. We will in still deliverance. That is, I said earlier, what? It's a labor of love, right? You have to love your brother to do deliverance on your brother effectively. Anybody can sit in a chair and start barking out instructions. We all know there's power in the name of Jesus, right? But there, is it power in you saying the name of Jesus? And if you don't have no power in saying the name of Jesus, I don't want you doing deliverance with me. Because I'm already in a state of bondage. You see what I'm saying? I'm already jacked up. And I've already humbled myself to let you know I need help. But you don't love me enough to tap into the Holy Spirit and to cast that thing out of me. Now, if I could do it myself, what I need you for? <laughs> you know what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? This is a labor of love. So when you've given, no matter what it is, your spirit has to be right or it's going to be unacceptable to y'all. Everybody understand that? And when you have an unacceptable offering, you are automatically cursed. And when you've cursed, you start to receive information. Now we back to what Teacher Shane talked about, these words going forward. You don't think the devil understand the power of words? Where is the battlefield? Where are all these words from the Hasatan being submitted? Oh, he fully understands the battle. And we have all these precious promises, all this incredible instruction. Cast these things down and resist, and we, we can do all this. But when we offend it, because our offering jacked up, and Yah has rejected that offering, but done told you he will accept you. He will accept you, okay? If you just do right, you take the approach of being offended. 
All right, I'm going to read from the Apocrypha real quick here. And it's Ecclesiasticus 35. And it says, He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. He that requireth a good turn offereth fine flour. And he that giveth alms sacrifices praise. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to Yahweh. And to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. Thou shalt not appear empty before Yahweh. For all these things are to be done because of the commandment. The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat. And the sweet savor thereof is before the most high. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable. And the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Yah forbid. I'm, I'm going to get back to the text. But Yah forbid something happened to our precious shepherd. Will anybody in this room ever forget, forget about him? That's a righteous man. His offering is accepted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give unto the most high accordingly as he hath enriched thee. And thou hast gotten. Give with a cheerful eye. For the master recompenses and will give thee seven times as much. Do not think to corrupt with gifts. For such he will not receive. And trust not the unrighteous sacrifices, for Yahweh is the judge, and with him is no respect of person. So this thing all starts with what we desire to give, y'all. And if that giving is not done from the firstling, it's unacceptable. And if it's unacceptable, now we're cursed. So let's get into uh, some of these things that, 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 that come up once we are cursed. Uh, Proverbs 10, 12. Read that, Brother Shane. Hatred, hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. Read. Proverbs 14, 30. See, these all y'all know. Y'all can go back and get these later. Don't forget the Genesis scripture, okay? Uh, Proverbs 14, 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy, the rottenness of the bones. See, you walk through that process with Cain and Abel, and once his offering was rejected Yah threw him a lifeline okay he tried to recover him but Cain rejected Yah then and then you saw hatred you saw envy towards his brother why because his sacrifice was accepted correct and ultimately what did it lead to murder now most High spoke to us right when we all got here, what did he say? You don't love your brother. Just keep it simple. You don't love your brother. Your hands are unclean. How many of us are in the category of Cain? See, you could read about the account, and you could shake your head and, 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 and say, I agree. But the agreement really, truly needs to come from right here in your heart. And you need to admit to y'all, man, I've been Cain. I, I, I've been Cain. How many of you will close up your bowels of compassion to somebody sitting right here in this room just because they smell a little worse than you do? He may not have had a shower for four days and you may not have had one for two. You think it's because he stink why you won't open up your arms though? No, that ain't it. You already had made up in your mind because your offering was unaccepted. It was. Your offering was unaccepted, and you walk it in a curse. And when you cursed, you're going to always walk at envy. 
you're going to always walk in jealousy. You're going to always hate. And the Bible talks about all the time how what? Sin does what? It abounds. I don't understand why we have these thoughts. Like we can be in sin and magically it's just going to go away one day. I ain't got to do nothing. If I just keep walking, if I just keep going, it'll just go away and I'll grow out of it. You know how that is sometimes in the world? They told you, oh, it's just a baby. Don't worry about it. They'll grow out of it. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You ain't growing out of no sin. You're going to have to get your tail <laughs> in that deliverance chair. You're going to have to purge yourself. And you're going to have to get on Yah's plan and agree with his word when it comes to these wicked and these corrupt and these bent, crooked ways that we walk in. Now, if I did a poll right now, if I did a poll, and I said, how many of you love your brothers? It'd be a lot of y'all raising your hand. But if we did a real, true, spiritual scan of your life, most of you are walking like Cain. Oh, Elder, you don't know that. Well, you know what? I may not know that. Y'all yeah, do. That's why he showed up and told you you don't love your brother. Y'all yeah, does. So forget about Elder Rufus. Some of you reject instruction that you know is just so sound. Why do you do that? I'm telling you now, you cursed. Because your offering has been rejected. You full of envy. You full of jealousy. You full of strife and contention. See, sin is abounding. It's a progressive thing too. Now, we're going to encourage you. Now, don't get, don't, don't get no spirit of condemnation on you. We're going to give you the, 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 the keys to walk in righteousness, all right? But you need to have this on your heart and your mind if you're going to be real before Yah. And some of you are wondering why your prayers don't get answered. Why is it taking so long? Why this? Why that? You're cursed. Because what you've been bringing, that's not acceptable. Because it's not coming for the firstling. You ain't thinking Yah first. The book tells seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, right? Simple. But we ain't doing that. We thinking, I got this car payment to pay. I got this house note. I got these retarded children. I'm sorry. I, this is what we think. And all our thoughts are towards all these worldly carnal things instead of Yah. But then when we show up at the feast, we want to try to put on our nice clothes, even though you ain't showered in five days. You still stink. <laughs> but we still love you. Because <laughs> we stink like you. But go back to Genesis. Don't forget that. And remember what Yah said about Abel's offering. A sweet savor to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9. Uh, read that, teacher Shane. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of Yah. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices, and to him that sacrifices not, as is the good. So is the sinner, and he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart, while they live, and after that they go unto the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know 
that they shall die. But the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward. For the, remem the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Listen. Go, go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for Yah now accepteth thy works. Now let me break this down so everybody can understand. That was seven texts read. That's another one I want you to focus on. That's Ecclesiastes 9. That's verses 1 through 7. In the end, it says that Yah now accepteth thy works. And part of what we miss in that is when you hear the word accepted, you think that you have been accepted in Yah. But if you go back and you read that and meditate on it carefully, it's telling you everything that's going on up under the sun. Is there not good and evil up under the sun? Is there not clean and unclean up under the sun? You can make a decision to be evil. Y'all going to accept that decision. And you going to re reap the fruit and the reward of evil. All right. Last night, speak life, right? Or speak death, right? Y'all going to accept either one of them that you do. And you're going to get your just do reward. You need to understand, Yah is not forcing you to do anything. Again, we'll go back to, to, to the beginning. We'll go back to the basics because we forget it. Because the basics show you what is in you. We found out in the early stage what's in Cain. You think you're different than Cain? And some of you know I'm telling you. You know I'm telling the truth. Now, some of you just going to flat out ignore what I'm saying to you. That's what you're going to do. Why? Because you cursed. And you don't love your brother. You don't. And the only way that you're going to even have an opportunity to get free from that is to first look deep at yourself and understand, I ain't done nothing to love my brother. I've been acting like Cain. I ain't brought an acceptable offering here. I've been like Cain. I might have brought an offering, but it didn't come from my first one. It didn't come from the fat. It didn't come from that. So I'm cursed. Now, either you agree with the book or you don't. And if you curse, we want to break that, right? So that's what we call them. We want to break these curses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. I want to really put this on your mind because, again, we're going to fellowship. We're going to enjoy each other. Man, me and Pastor was talking this morning and last night just how much we love seeing the saints. Just love being around y'all. But don't forget the first thing Elder Rufus did when he got here. The motivation for me coming. Because if I'm jacked up, Everybody under me going to be jacked up. If I'm not free, how am I going to help Georgia get free or anybody else in the ministry? You think, uh, matter of fact, El Donnie can vouch for it. A couple brothers came over and sat and El said, ah, give us some space. You know, trying to do deliverance and brothers come sit, you know. <laughs> no, they don't know. They don't know. El Donnie said, man, give us room, bro. Give us room. I said, El, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Let's get these spirits. They can sit there all day. Let them watch. Maybe learn something. I want these things gone so that I can have the compassion needed when you come to me for deliverance. And I can walk in that love. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but, if I'm full of envy because my brother got a higher title, and I don't know who put merit on titles but we think he got a higher title or I see my sister and I think she's getting favor from Sister Carol or Pastor Dow likes him more you walking around with envy, you walking around with jealousy them words from the house of time, running by words last night right, feeding you 
And sin is at the door, remember? Y'all remember what y'all told Cain? It's at the door. If you just do right, you will be accepted. And some of you, I'm just keeping it real. You need to repent. Some of you, sin ain't at the door no more. It ain't knocking. Sin is stretched out on the lazy boy. That booger laying in your bed. It doesn't kick your wife out. That's what it is. But you got to be real with yourself when you're doing your self-evaluation. You sitting here with these made-up Christian arm prayers and, oh, y'all, forgive me, I'm a wicked. No, tell y'all how wicked you are. Tell him your wickedness. And see what happens. See what happens. See what happens. Bear your soul to y'all. Because that's the only way you're going to break this curse. Okay? That's the only way your praise and your prayers and your first offering to y'all is going to be accepted. And then when the Holy Spirit comes in, he can lead and guide you to where all the truth is. Because, see, you think you know truth, but you don't know it. And if Jesus didn't know for a fact that we needed the Holy Spirit, he wouldn't have told us he was going to send him after he left. So you need the Holy Spirit regardless of what your wicked mind tells you. You need the Holy Spirit. So some of you that know you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, that should be your number one goal here at the feast. Yeah. You should tell yourself, I ain't leaving straightway until I get the Spirit. I'm not leaving here. Until I have the Holy Spirit and I get these demons cast out of me. Now, spiritual warfare is, it is a lifestyle. Y'all have heard the testimony straightway. Man, when they find out about deliverance, man, they did deliverance every single day for three years. Is that accurate, Pastor? Three years. Y'all hear it on blog talk. One of the first things we hear, ah, deliver. that's that straightway. That was their first one. You know, he ain't get no title. Then go to the next one, Tyler, Texas. That first one, that was here. Right here. And these are the chosen, set-apart people of Yah to give you the instructions for life. He didn't choose you. He didn't choose you to come and instruct us. He let you hear the voice of Pastor Dow, and that's why you're here now. But we're not going to follow the instruction. We're not going to follow the example. Think about that, y'all. Think about that. We're not going to follow it. So we want to stay cursed. We want to walk in hatred. We want to walk in malice. We want to walk in envy and jealousy. See, the Messiah came and they, 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 they crucified him for what? Envy and jealousy. And here it is. We are the, many are called, right? Everybody here has been called. Only a few going to be chosen, though. My question to you is, why not you? Why won't you be chosen? Because I ain't satisfied with just being called. I'm just telling you that right now. Because that ain't getting you into the kingdom. <laughs> It's not going to get you in. It's not going to get you in. Uh, I don't know if that's me or not. Sorry. Uh, am I doing something? Proverbs 26, verses 24 through 28. Read that, Teacher Shane, please. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Mm. Whoso, whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole 
congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Man, I hear stuff like this, and it just jacked me up. I'll be just like, golly gee, y'all. Deceit is within. It's within. And it started with hatred. It's covered by deceit. So how many of you walking in hatred and trying to deceive us, making us think it's something else? But what else did the text say? It's going to be shown in front of the whole assembly. You're not hiding. You are not hiding. Stuff like what Pastor Dow said in the sermon on Shabbat. And he, and he looked out and he said, I th- actually, you preached. And then you talked afterward. And you said, I can tell you 10 of you right now ain't going to be here for Passover. Man, that kind of stuff just make me lay out on the floor. And I know he, he ain't talking about me. I'm going to be here. I already know. My mind made up. <laughs> My mind made up. Now, one thing Pastor Dial is extremely good at is remembering. <laughs> you say something to Pastor Dial, your butt go wayward, oh, he going to remind you. I called him recently about the brother that had to be put out the ministry, had to lead the ministry. Now, let's get it right, because I know a lot of folk have been chattering. The brother requested to leave. And we honored his request. Let's get it right. We didn't have to kick. I'm, I'm, I'm correct, right, Pastor? We didn't have to kick Brother Junior out the ministry. He requested to leave. And I quickly honored his request. Okay? So let's get the story right. But, you know, Pastor's very, very good at remembering. So if I get to acting a fool one day and cutting up and that damn, <laughs> he going to be very quick to remind me of this day. Oh, I remember you was up there preaching there. I remember your mind was made up. Y'all don't think we do the same with y'all? Y'all don't think we do the same with y'all? All us elders and deacons, we don't forget nothing you tell us. Nothing. And you know why? Because we got the Holy Spirit. Even if I did forget, he'd remind me. There it is. Remember, we're back to that again. That's why we went back to the beginning. But this deceit is within us, y'all. It's within us. And if we can't acknowledge that, you ain't never going to be free. You're going to stay in the cursed state, and you're going to walk in hatred, and you're going to walk in this malice, you're going to walk in this envy and this jealousy, and you're going to get to the point of murder, and it's going to be displayed in front of all of us. It's going to be displayed in front of all of us. Remember, when you're righteous, you will never be forgotten. The saints here, they've buried, what, four saints, five? They ain't forgot none of them. None of them. Some of you, you die right now, you don't have the option to get buried here. I'm just being real. You don't have that option because you ain't righteous. You're just not. But if you're not going to take a real look at yourself and really say to Yah who you are, you're not going to get set free. Now, who can deny that this atmosphere that we have been in up here in the tabernacle, out here working on the new tabernacle, down there on the land, on the range, in the dining hall, on the pavilion, on the patio, the deck, who can deny that it has not been a beautiful environment? This is conducive for healing. It is conducive. It is. This atmosphere is ripe. This atmosphere is ripe for miracles and signs and wonders to go forth. But Jesus himself told us that the only thing that can stop his power is what? How many of you walking in unbelief? Some of y'all letting the devil, I'm looking at y'all. I'm watching the devil tell you right now. Man, that nigga stupid. Don't listen to me. What are you saying? 
Ah, that ain't you, man. Man, I'm finna take me a nap. I'm tired, man. I've been running all day, man. I've been laying rebar today. I'm gonna put down two chairs. You ain't did shit. You ain't tired. You ain't tired. You should never be tired when the word going forward. Should never be tired. Now, now I've watched all of us out here fellowshipping. We hanging out. We doing our drinking thing and fellowshipping and eating and all that. And I see you at the table like this, 11 o'clock at night. 11 o'clock at night. But you press your way through that, don't you? <laughs> you press your way through that. Now, now we're back at the beginning. What is your motivation for being here? Why do you think, why do you think y'all brought you here? Don't forget, you are an invited guest on the land that he has put his name on. And you forget this so quickly. He didn't bring you here just for you to fellowship. He did not bring you here just to meet your new brothers. He brought you here to get your tail free. And it's actually, it's actually offensive. Now, see, I'm so glad that I love the law. I got great peace. I ain't going to be offended by nothing. But it's actually offensive for some of you to show up and don't give no effort at all, none, to get free. And you think you hiding. You sisters, you think you hiding. You brothers, you think you hiding. We see you. Did not, did not. The disciples say to Jesus, do you want us to go get the tares? Did not say that? Yes, they letting you know they know. Yes, we know. But even though we know, we still did all of this, went through all the logistics for months on end. So you could come here and be in an atmosphere conducive for you. So reject y'all again if you won't, Cain. You're going to stay cursed. You're going to walk in hatred. You're going to stick in envy. You're going to go to bed with murder on your mind. Because if you don't love your brother, that's who you are and that's what you are. I believe the book. I don't give a damn what you say. I don't. Your personal opinions, your, your suggestions, and some of you are so darn so smart. I mean... Man, you damn theologians out here. I honestly believe that some of y'all are so smart. You think you're so smart in your mind, you'll never be able to ration your mind around y'all delivering you. So now what you've done is become an idolater. Because you, God. That's what you've done. You, God. We love you. We labor for you. We sacrifice for you. Also, that you can experience this light that we experience. You can experience this inner joy and love that we experience. This love affair. This, 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 this unquenchable love. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. But some of you won't even give an effort. That's disappointing. So when you go out and you say, man, hell, the roof is mad. Hell yeah, I'm mad. Yep. Because I think it's a disrespect to the stake. You don't honor the tree. You don't honor the sacrifice that was made so that you didn't have to be in sin and that you'd never have to die. You don't honor it. And here he is, knocked at your door. He knocked. And you open. If you didn't, you wouldn't be sitting here. Why not be chosen? Why not be the remnant? If one can put how many in flight? Boy, look how many we got in this room. We ain't talk about counties, y'all. We talking about states and regions. But the power, the power is driven by unity and love. That's what it's driven by. And if you got your own plan, 
as you can see, Shepard ain't messing around with y'all no more. And I've been clapping and happy and doing cartwheels and everything. He ain't messing. The compassion, the, the, it's there. Don't get me wrong. He's still love. He's still compassionate. But that, that long arm of long suffering, shh, bye. You ain't with us. You ain't with us. You're not with us. And if you're not, go do your thing. And we're still waiting for somebody to show us how to do it. Because we will wait. We will join you. We will follow. We will support you. We love y'all that much. Now, I'm not going to go over. I told you I had six scriptures. I, well, I did four, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I ain't going over an hour. All right. Uh, uh, you know what? Let's just get here. All right. I, I think I've given you more than enough to meditate on tonight for yourself. Because, again, remember again, y'all, this is a build. This is day two, right? We got four days, Pastor, this. We building. We getting your mind. We getting your heart. We getting your spirit ready for mass deliverance. You're going to get that opportunity in this beautiful environment to get free. To get free. You're going to get your opportunity. Now, we're going to read this last text. And this last text is a text I really need you to meditate on. All right? Because I told you we're just not going to just tear you down and beat you up and make you feel all condemned and you know what I'm saying and not give you a way out this last text we're going to read the apostle actually gave us the order of our spiritual growth alright and this thing blessed me decades ago and I've been meditating on this ever since and I'm suggesting I can't make you but I'm suggesting that you do the same you meditate on this okay because this is the order that it goes in. Remember, we started off what? B come what? After what? A. You can't get to, you got to go A first, y'all. It's A, B, C, D. I know the English language is all jacked up, but you still got to use A, B. A is before B. All right? C is before D. This is the order, okay? And this is your encouragement. Because you got the apostle telling you this is what you can walk in. Now, listen closely, okay? Listen closely. Second Peter 1. Read verses 1 through 4 first, teacher. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, with us through the righteousness of Yah and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you, through the knowledge of Yah and of Jesus, our Master. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Peter just gave you a charge through encouragement. He gave you a charge through encouragement. He laid it all out right there in those first four verses. Now, let's read verses 5 through 7. These three verses is about to tell you the order and the sequence of your spiritual growth. And lift, read slow when you do a teacher saying so they can get it. But process this in your mind. This is what we ended on right here. Process it in your mind. Where are you at with this? What if you tried to operate in and you didn't skip this but try to go here? What if you totally ignored in your spiritual growth? And listen very, very closely. Because to begin this feast, Y'all told us what? We don't what? We don't love our brethren. And look where we end up at. Go ahead and read, teacher. And beside this, giving all diligent add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. 
And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Y'all see we end in love, right? Charity is love. But what was right before that? See, some of you claim you love. You ain't even came close to progressing up through all those to get to brotherly kindness. But you ain't done it. But you tried to skip and you want to walk around every day and say, I love, I love, I love. You are a lie and the truth ain't in you. There are ways and there are precepts and there are statutes and there are commandments and there are laws. And we have a heritage that we're learning. And in that, if any part of that, you can't wrap your mind around. You can't receive. You can't understand. You need a, a further clarity on. You ain't walking in love. Because his ways should be our ways. Not our ways, him adapting to us. Meditate on that, Second Peter. Because that's encouragement, and that's a serious charge. And I remember seeing that decades ago, saying, man, just the fear y'all came all over me. And I had to admit, every step of the way, I ain't been temperate, I ain't been patient, I don't love nobody, how in the hell I claim? Man, I had to be real and honest with myself. And every single one of those requires you to give an acceptable offering, to walk in it. And if not, you're going to be cursed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless y'all, saints. I want to uh, uh, leave a quick note for the brothers uh, for tomorrow morning. About 5.30 tomorrow morning, I'm going to come up because i got some things I'm praying for that I want to see happen. Not because I want it, but it's just what I believe the Most High would do for us. Because we are his children. And I told Brother Dominic, is Dominic in here? Where you at, bro? Hallelujah. You know, we, we just going to continue to intercede and war because I was just, you know, I was talking with Mother Barb about this one thing. And I'm going to say it again. See, what Elder Rufus is talking about is, is, is the speech ain't different, El. It's the same thing. I sat here and listened to everything you said, and I sat here as a student to listen. One, so I can make sure that what is being said, I continue to apply. So in that, see, listen to this. He said the environment is conducive for what? For, for healing. All right? Miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, I want you, because Pastor talked about it, Azusa Street. See, I don't know if people had it on their mind while they're down here. But you need to have it on your mind. And it's on my mind. I ain't, I ain't letting it leave. It's not leaving. Somebody is going to be touched greatly during this feast. Somebody is. Somebody's going to be the one. So at 530... Tomorrow morning, it's, it's not mandatory. Nobody said, you better be up. Ain't nobody going to blow horns. I'm just going to get up that hill like I did and come right here and put my face down and just bombard heaven. Hallelujah. Father, please Hallelujah. show up. Because there's somebody here that if they just would see you touch them greatly, if they could see their brother or their sister touch greatly, their life will forever change. And there would be another son in your house, another daughter in your courts. Hallelujah. 
Praise y'all. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We just come before you with all our wants, all our needs. We come before you that we be changed, that we become another man, another sister, another brother. Let our lives forever be different. Let us not go home and be the same people we were before you touched us. Oh, I ask you, Father, to pour out the blood upon every head. Seal us with your Holy Spirit like never before. Let it be a revival. Let it be a burning, Yahweh, upon your children. In the name of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, we praise your holy name, Father. Let the staring begin to be upon your people, Father, we are looking for you. We are looking for you, Jesus. We are looking for you, Jesus. We are looking for your power. We are looking for your name to be on every last one of your children. That we can bear your name among the nations. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the word that came forth. Continue to multiply to elders' home. Anoint his head with the oil of joy, Father. Continue to increase his light, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless his house greatly. Let it increase, Father, before your sight. We bless our shepherd. We thank him for the labor that's going forth. We thank the saints, Father, that you have put in their hearts to labor, to open up their home, to open up, Father, their hands and give unto the children who have showed up to this feast. We just want to come before you and bless you and thank you for all that you're doing and all that you have done even though we have not seen the manifestation, we bless you greatly, Jesus. I mean. Shalom, shalom, saints of the Most High, our brothers. Up here by around 7 o'clock, there'll be a pre-prep before the cement trucks come. So just be ready. Whoever is going to be uh, involved in the labor of getting this uh, foundation laid, 7 o'clock, 7.30, sharp. Hallelujah. Praise you who is ever driving the buses, shuttling the saints, uh, let them come forth and get ready to uh, shuttle the saints down. 